we have five cases in front of us. So um, I'm sure that Kristen has um, had everybody sign in. Um, that's for our records. So first case is a continuous, continue, continuation of a case that was um, originally scheduled for August 1st, 2019. Um, it was then, I'll start out, um, case was uh, <coughs> case was uh, scheduled for the seven o'clock on August 1st 2018 um, application of Michael Wells pursuant to Mass General Laws chapter 48 section 9 for special permit under Reading Zone bylaw section 7.3 and 7.32 to demolish the existing non-conforming dwelling on a non-conforming lot and to construct a new single-family dwelling that will require variances pursuant to Mass General Law Section 10 under the Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 6.3 on the property located at 65 Longfellow. Um, there, was, there was nobody representing that night. The board continued this public hearing until the uh, until the uh, 15th of August um, at that evening um, there was no preparation was not ready to come before the board the board continued the hearing again until October the 3rd um, from October the 3rd uh, it was continued um, again because of new legislation that was brought forward. The board wanted to hear from town council, which we'll hear about this evening. Um, and it was scheduled, rescheduled for November the 7th. So the first order of business is, uh, and I'll, having read the, the rest of the the jargon that goes with opening every meeting since we've done that four times I will suspend that for this evening um, we do have uh, a request uh, the board made before town council and it was relative to um, legislation uh, Andrew um, um, MGL 40A section 7 yes which we was, was upgraded by a uh, mass uh, general court mm -hmm. because of uh, issues regarding property that was um, built upon with or without uh, building permits uh, that have been existing for more than 10 years. Uh, this property appears to qualify. We will determine that tonight. So we've asked for a summation of that from the town council, and town council has given that to us in a stream of emails. Um, and the board has that in front of them. Um, Andrew, you want to sum summarize that from town council? Yes. So basically the legislature said that if this illegal structure was more than 10 years old, it can achieve legal non-conforming status, which then means it can be built to in a number of ways by right um, now that it has achieved the legal non-conforming status. And town council has agreed that the structure can be raised and rebuilt on the exact same footprint according to section 7.3 of the Reading Zoning Bylaw and that as long as the new structure will not increase the footprint of the existing structure, create a new dimensional nonconformity or extend an existing dimensional nonconformity that the structure can be built to that footprint. So have a plan set showing the existing dwelling that would be rebuilt 
in its dimensions, and that's what we're hoping to approve tonight for Ms. Jackie Welch. And this is basically under 7.3.1 is what uh, town council suggested we mm -hmm. follow. And basically in there, the building inspector may grant a building permit or repair or interior renovations of non-conforming structures that are conforming as to use, which the new by law under section master laws 40A allows now. Uh, the building inspector may grant a building permit for alterations for a non-conforming single or two-family dwelling that will not increase the footprint of the existing structure, create a new dimensional non-conformity, or extend the existing dimensional non-conformity regardless of whether the law complies with the current area and or frontage requirements. Um, this is a structure that does not comply. Uh, is a non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot that does not conform to any dimensional setbacks. Basically, what we're doing uh, is the board has been through town council, uh, needs to make a finding that this uh, does meet those sets of uh, conditions and therefore um, we're just making that finding. We're not giving a special permit. We are not giving a variance. Uh, we're just making a finding that according to town council, it meets the criteria under the new section um, of 40A, uh, section seven. Mm -hmm. So um, I would turn that over uh, to any member of the board who wants to make a comment or ask questions before we move forward. There was, a piece, there was a piece of this property that was supposedly built without the permit. Right. Is that reflected on this? Yes. Yes. It is. Yes. Okay. And this is this represents only half of the original plan that was submitted. Mm. One is the existing right. portion, and the one was proposed. Right. The proposed is way out of. Won't mm -hmm. be. It didn't. It, it was way beyond the existing footprint, and this, the footprint now is the determining factor. And uh, what we're doing is we're returning this to the building inspector, who will take it forth if the board finds that this complies with what town council has su suggested <coughs> under the new uh, section 40A, section seven. Is the uh, right. is the applicant here tonight? Do you know, John? Yes. Is the applicant here tonight? Hi, Jackie Welch. Okay. Um, I actually went to the assessor's office and I have the footprint from 1993, and that's what we're going to go on. Do you guys want? That's to what you're basing. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. That's yep. That's exactly what we're looking for. Thank you. And you have been sworn in before, so I'm not going to score you in again. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank Jackie, from this we're assuming that uh, there is documentation, at least justified by the assessor's office, mm -hmm. that um, they were assessing the property based upon this, even though it had no uh, building limit. Starting in 93, so somewhere from 90 to 93, it must have been put on. Mm -hmm. And then starting in 93, it was there, and they've been assessing it ever since. <coughs> so. Correct. Right. This has existed for the 10 year period. Mm -hmm.
question, questions from board members to the applicant? Nick? I have a question uh, more for the board. Um, is it the building commissioner is uncomfortable with this and is looking for the finding from the board? The building commissioner didn't want to proceed, yes, without something from town council and or the board finding that this statue applied to this structure. Okay, so we're going to do that instead of having like the applicant uh, withdraw without prejudice or something like that, right? Right. I think okay. we'll have to withdraw the variance, right? Well, there's still the variance sitting on it. I mean, but we'd have to yield yeah. that and withdraw the Okay. Right. Right. But uh, if I could ask the applicant, do you, you plan on uh, building in the same footprint or something smaller? Or the exact footprint. The exact footprint. Yeah. You're going to, okay. Yep. yep. That's, uh, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I'm, I'm fine with it. And it. It appears to me now that, you know, we have the evidence and, and town assessors records that, uh, number one, the existing structure that's there has been there. Uh, uh, for, for a greater time than 10 for years. 10 years. And uh, it would meet the criteria of the uh, new statute uh, mm -hmm. in regards to uh, uh, being a, the, uh, a legal, no, a non legal, con non conforming legal, yeah. non conforming <laughs> legal structure. It's been there 10 years or more, so it's legal, so it's but not it's non conforming. Yeah. Not conforming, but yeah. it's compliant under the it's new statute. It's compliant with the new statute, yeah. And that's what we were looking we for, look. for a motion to, to move this forward uh, in the finding and then return it to the building inspector. Uh, there's no question of what the height requirement is. The setback requirements must conform. Uh, knowing the uh, building commissioner or the building inspector, he'll, he'll want... Uh, 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 verification of the foundation that uh, is put in, mm -hmm. but all of that is between the applicant now and the building commissioner. It's, right. It is the board is not involved in this at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. We're just uh, making a finding right. for the benefit of the building commissioner. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll accept the motion to that effect then, if there's no other questions. I'll go ahead then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I propose that uh, we board make a finding that the uh, existing structure that is slated for demolition uh, has in fact been in existence uh, for 10 years or more and as such uh, meets the well, the structure doesn't meet the criteria. The proposed structure, which will be built upon the footprint, the exact footprint of the existing structure, will in fact then meet the criteria of Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 7, which allows that existing structure to be replaced if it is replaced as such on the exact same footprint uh, on there. Here is second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? Let the vote show five zero zero. We have nothing to hand you for stamp plans. We have nothing okay. that I can give you as records. It will just go in that the board made a finding, um, took a vote, and gave it back in the file. Uh, and the <coughs> right. will take, we'll take I'll, it I'll, uh, I'll write up something on that, John, and okay. that will go into the file then, right? Okay. A finding, okay. the board's finding. I'll write, yeah. Now, I have um, just one other thing that has to be done. Um, I'm assuming that since we have made the finding now, uh, you have the option of withdrawing your request for a variance uh, uh, on this particular piece of property. Um, and if you are, well, I would think that you would want to withdraw without prejudice your request for a variance on this particular piece of property that was initially given to the board. Yes. Okay, I'll accept the second motion then. Uh, so moved. Uh, uh, favor second. To, yeah, so moved to uh, withdraw your request for a variance. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Right. Five zero zero. I did not see. Did you second that, Nick? 
Ken, I will back you. And uh, okay, yeah, and I'll uh, try to incorporate that into the uh, decision. Into the decision that we uh, came. To. I put in the back of the card. Um, I will put in the file one of these copies um, that we can. You already have this, so I'm not going to call you back again. Okay. You all set? Next case. What's the next case, Kristen? Hanscom? Pearl Street. Pearl Street. Pearl Street. Yeah. Pearl Street. 1818. Okay. Hi. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Wall Street, Reading, Mass., on Wednesday, November the 7th at 7 o'clock. Um, the application of Carol and Bill Jackson, pursuant to Mass. General Laws 48, Section 9, for a special permit under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 5.3.2 and 5.4.7, to construct an accessory apartment attached to the existing three car garage. A uh, single family dwelling at the property located 549 Post in Reading, Mass. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, uh, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission. Assessor's Office, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stone, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak to this particular hearing to this evening, please stand and raise your right hand, and it doesn't hurt at all, even if you don't have anything to say. Uh, do you swear that the testimony given before before the board this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. 
Nancy Chumi. I'm the architect for this project. Uh, Bill Jackson is here and his son Bill is here as well. Um, it is, as you described, an accessory apartment uh, attached to an existing single family dwelling. It's on a, a fairly large piece of property, um, 81,509 square feet. It's on Pearl Street. Um, what they're hoping to do is the, uh, Carol and Bill will be moving into the accessory apartment and their son Bill, his wife, and daughter will be moving into the main house. So um, it's kind of a nice way to do it, I think, in, in the way the world goes these days. Um, the existing structure is 45 plus, almost 4,600 square feet. Uh, we can go up to one third of that square footage with a maximum of 1,000. So we're more than qualified with the size of the existing structure uh, to be able to put in a 1,000 square foot uh, uh, apartment. Um, I was asked uh, that to make it extremely clear as to what the dimensions are of the main house that we revise the plot plan to show all of the exterior dimensions. And I think Kristen we gave them a copy, but I have additional copies if you wanted to scale it. I don't know if you gave them um, or 17 paper or not, but just so that you have it, that's it. Thank you. Um, I believe, um, you know, it's, in, it's an interesting house. You can't really see it from Pearl Street as you go by. So one of the criteria is to make sure that the door, front door does not look in competition with the single family structure. Um, this particular structure uh, is uh, set back quite a distance and the apartment will be set back even further towards the end of the property. Yeah, that's to scale, actually. Um, we, will, uh, we were also asked to go through the uh, performance standards, so I don't know, I think that was also submitted in terms of each of the code items in the performance standards. Um, if you've read it, I think you understand that what they are proposing uh, more than qualifies for those performance standards. Would you like me to go through those, or you have had a chance to take a look at them? I, I don't want to waste time here. I, I, think, I think we're all still. Yeah, very good. So if you have any questions, uh, I do have pictures uh, of the main structure. I don't know if anybody's been able to get out there, so you might be interested in seeing it. it uh, has those, yeah. There's five copies there. Um, they sort of take an order of coming up to the house and going around and seeing just how far back this garage is from the main street. So any questions, please? Mm -hmm. I think the board, as you know, um, usually goes to the property. Yes. But uh, has in the past uh, many years not treaded upon the property without permission. Um, and um, it would be a little difficult for the board to get together. Yes. Um, so I don't. I, I know I've gone by the property a couple of times. I've looked in. But Can't see very much. Yes, these pictures would be very helpful in that. This is the property, and, and I was getting confused with the mailboxes out there yes. and the numbers. Is this the property with the two stone pillars? That's, that's the driveway, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's correct. two sets of property yeah. with stone pillars. That's right. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, the one to the the first one as you're going yeah. on Pearl is to the other property. They have the two stone pillars. That's the other property has a horse. Right. And, 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 and it's green. set yeah. way back. Yes. Yeah, that's it. And as John says, yeah, yes. we don't try to do it on the property at all. Yes. That explains it all, I think, the plans. I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. Are the entrances to the accessory apartment strictly to, uh, through the porch area? It's through the porch, yes, in fact. Front and uh, back? And in the back, correct. They have a pool two from there. The, two in the back and one in the front. Yes, correct. There's one in the front off of the front covered, that, that covered porch to the right. There's also a mud room. They do not have access to that mudroom. That mudroom connects to the garage. They go out of their porch to the mudroom and then get access to 
that garage. They can access it through the porch? Yes, correct. Okay. So now, the, that addition is higher than the garage floor? Correct. That's correct. And it's and, a few and the main up. house, you have to go from the garage up? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting house. It has a three-car garage, and above right. the garage is a whole other set of rooms. Right. There's also, out of the garage, another connection into the main house. So to get to the main house, you could go up a full set of stairs and go up to the second mm. floor through that mud room. And that stair already exists, actually. Um, so this is just making a better entrance to that stair uh, through that mud room. And they also have this nice pool in the back. So the intent is that they can either go through the garage through the mud room, sort of a pool house room, really, to get to the garage, to the pool, or they can go upstairs directly to the second floor where there's a common little area for sitting almost another family room and some bedrooms. Does the mud room and the laundry room exist today? Uh, the mud room and that laundry area do not exist, so that's, well, that's an addition. Part of that's being added as well. That's being added, correct. Where did they do all this before? Not, uh, before. Where was the laundry? Oh, there's, there's another laundry in the main house. The this main will house. be for the pool. And then also, I'm assuming the apartment will be able to take advantage of that okay. closer laundry. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, I, it, it appears to me they've met all the uh, criteria there of, uh, of the uh, bylaws in regards to an accessory apartment, especially in Cats 1. Uh, certainly just a single driveway coming off Pearl, you're not going to notice any difference from Pearl. Uh, I think they're fine. I believe uh, by, uh, you know, going through the uh, criteria that are required for the accessory apartment, they're basically attesting to the fact that they've met all those requirements. And uh, I'm satisfied with it. I, I don't see an issue with it. I would uh, support this. Nick. Uh, just that I concur it appears to meet the performance standards. That's all I have. Hi. The commentary for me is acceptable. Well, I went through it also. Uh, it seems to meet all the standards. Um, zoning issues, um, it's fine. Um, it's between you and the building inspector as to what your set of plans are, but we'll be end up stamping you the set of plans that you have put forward. What I am con I want to say concerned because I'm not concerned. Um, with the changes in the accessory apartment bylaw, um, before whatever plans you submitted were cast in concrete because the structure was there and anything that you changed was going to be up to the building inspector. Now with a detached um, or new construction, uh, it creates a new dimension of uh, what standards need to be met. And all this board can do is saying that according to these set of plans that you have submitted, it appears to be correct. But we don't have any verification of that until after it's built. So this has happened before in Reading here, at least in my tenure, um, <coughs> where things have after built, and I'm not talking to you, talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but uh, I think that we're going, that the board is going to have to find some way with the building commissioner and whatever for a certification at the time before the occupancy permit is granted that it is uh, contingent upon the set of plans that were given and any substantive changes need to come back to the board on the accessory part, not the new construction, uh, but at least on the accessory apartment. We don't have that language yet, <clears throat> and I'm very comfortable, personally, I'm very comfortable with you stamping these plans because I know that's, that's what's going to be done. <clears throat> You have a long standing in Reading, so that's, that's in with this board, so that's not a problem. So uh, that's the only comment that I have to make. And, and I would ask that if you would talk to Julie or Jean, I would love to get a meeting together with all of the people and stakeholders for this. 
and go over what we've found works and what doesn't work, because there are other things in here in this bylaw that need to be addressed. And it would be really good for people who are now intimately involved in this, including myself, to go back and say, this doesn't work, this works, this would make it easier. So um, just a little FYI, it would be nice to get that meeting put together sooner than later. OK. That's something Andrew could maybe yeah, do. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll yeah. bring it up tomorrow. That would be yeah. great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're willing to do that, uh, because I, I, I mean, we have two cases of new construction just, just this evening on accessory apartments and um, that brings up an, an issue that um, we've been burned on before and that is what started out as just a small addition as an accessory apartment grew into something larger than the existing house and uh, not in this particular no. case no. but I mean in some other cases so we need to refine that somewhat and this would mm -hmm. be perfect great yeah absolutely Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so I will entertain a motion then um, Open it up the oh, oops. I'm sorry <laughs> if I apologize uh, that's the that's the board portion of the uh, questioning of the applicant. Now I open it up to the uh, community. Um, if you have, if you want to speak with, on that tonight, please uh, please stand up, address address the board with your name and your address, and tell us what your concerns are. Yes. Tim Sherwood, three six seven, thirty eight years. Um, your name and, and address again? Tim Kerwin, Precinct 7, Hanscom Ave. I don't think he was sworn in. The reason uh, I put Hanscom Ave. Um, were you, did we swear you in? No, but I'm happy to be sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> did you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this board? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I just, you touched on the issue of zoning and, you know, the variances and all the deal that goes on between what is in fact defined and not defined. And this whole issue, and I'm not talking specifically about any project tonight, but the shoehorning in of all these various additions and and changes, if you will, into some of these suburban slash residential neighborhoods, not the commercial side of things, but the residential side of things, is becoming a big, big issue. And I just want to publicly say that there's a lot of talk going on about how we really need to think back and go back and look at looking at the zoning constraints and the zoning definitions to make sure that we're not just consuming footprints, we're consuming space. And we're losing all sorts of other aspects of what the neighborhood used to represent. And I'm not, a, I'm not here to say that we need to make any major changes tonight. I'm just suggesting that you think in terms of, I know this used to be all farms, okay? We're not there, we're way past that. But there are a lot of things going on in five block radius of our house that have changed the, the texture of the neighborhood. And again, I'm not talking specifically about anything tonight, but it's a big, big issue. I don't know if you know how big an issue it is, and we need to really think about it. That's the extent. Okay, that's not relevant to this case. I understand. Um, you need to take that before town meeting. Town meeting, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. uh, that to get to town meeting, you're going to have to go to the selectmen. Um, and the warrant, I think, has already been set for November, so the earliest option to do anything is going to be this coming May. April. May? April. April? Yeah. I spoke about the slides, but I'm familiar with the process. Okay. I'm just suggesting that you think about it. Okay. And as you heard this evening already, uh, the board has instructed um, the um, town planner to uh, go back to community development, mm -hmm. talk about this. Uh, we need to see what we can come up with and modify. And I think in the future there will be some minimally additional language because this is a special permit. Um, and the board can attach uh, conditions to special mm -hmm. permits very easily. I, I just don't. I don't think we have the, the proper wording for such a thing tonight, uh, at least for this particular case. So, any other input? I'll close the subject matter of this public hearing then and move on to um, the board. Do I hear a uh, motion uh, to put forward on this particular petition? I'll make a motion. Okay. 
Move to grant the petitioners, Carol and Bill Jackson, a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw Sections 532 and 547 to construct an accessory apartment attached to an existing three-car garage on a single-family dwelling on the property located at 549 Pearl Street in Reading in accordance with the plot plan of land dated August 30, 19, yeah, right, 2018, prepared and certified by the Sullivan Engineering Group, P.O. Box 2004 Woburn, Mass., and architectural drawings, sheets 1 through 7, dated September 12, 2018. Prepared by Toomey Design, 23 Cali California Road in Reading, Massachusetts. Do we hear a second? This, uh, well, we've got the standard call. conditions, right? Yeah, I do. I was just going to say, do you want to put any conditions in there? Yes. In regards to, the following uh, conditions would apply. Right. Foundation the petitioner permit. shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan <coughs> yeah, because of the proposed construction and a proposed foundation plan prior to the issuance of a foundation permit. The petitioner shall also submit to the building inspector final construction plans for the proposed structure along with the as-built foundation plan for the structure prior to the issuance of a building permit. And the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector as-built plans of the structure prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. I just want to make sure we go with the revised plan, 11-118. Um, uh, that was submitted by the applicant tonight. Uh, revised, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Is that what we have? Plot plan as 830, 2018 revised, yeah. November 1. Okay, then I'll need two copies. Okay, good catch. Got it. One copy's in here. Can I borrow? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Do I have a second on the motion? Second. Bob seconds. Uh, any discussion by the board? The additional con condition for, I think, future um, new construction on accessory apartment will be in addition to that, which will include, uh, but we need to get the proper wording before we actually go through with it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> yes, I know. Um, all in favor? Five zero zero. Let me see if I can get plan stamped. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You don't need another set of plans, sir. Uh, I need. Well, is there one in the folder? I think With so. the two eighteen. Yep. The latest. Believe revision. Yep. Okay. Then I'll stamp it in there. That's what you want to stamp. Is that the end one? Yeah. This is this year's? Yeah. Yeah. But you're ready. Yeah. Well, I have another one. Oh, okay. I yeah. have a smaller one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can still read it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Set of plans that were all over mine for the architecture. I need to set you
Tracy, these are yours. Thank you very much. And again, you are aware of the fact that it takes about up to 14 days to write it after the after this has been recorded with the clerk. You have 21, 20 days, 21st day for you to get it uh, for the appeals process. Very good. Thank okay. you very Thank much. You. Appreciate your time. Bear with us, we go through a lot of paper. Okay. Uh, next case before us is case number 1819, which is 161 Ash Street. The Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing <clears throat> in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass., on Wednesday, November 7, 2018, at 7 p.m. on the application of uh, Kayla. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, owner of Kalish uh, Studios, pursuant to Master of Laws 40A, Section 9, for special permit of Reading Zoning Bylaw, Section 531, to apply for use substantially similar to uh, by right use in order to conduct microblading as a service in the commercial property located at 161 Ash Street of Reading, Mass. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following board of selectmen, police department, building department, health department, engineering division, town clerk, fire department, conservation commission, assessor's office, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Linfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. And again, anybody who wants to comment, if it doesn't hurt, please stand and take the oath. Nobody else, I guess you're all set. <laughs> uh, I swear that the testimony given before us, before the board, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing, the truth, nothing but the truth. You do. Yours. Um, so I have been a resident of Reading um, my whole life. I have been running my business here in Reading for a little over five years now. Um, we have a list of services that include eyelash extensions, waxing, um, a lot of typical spa treatments. Um, and we are hoping to include microblading in our list of services. It actually does already exist in the town. Um, According to um, the Board of Cosmetology, it's actually listed as semi-permanent um, makeup. The town of Reading, I believe, is classifying it as a permanent makeup. However, it's the process you're using a blade, you're dipping it into a pigment, um, and you're thickening eyebrows for people that either don't have eyebrows for medical reasons, alopecia, or just don't have have lost their eyebrows over the years. So um, 
again, it's already existing here in Reading. It's actually considered not to be as permanent as tattooing, whereas tattooing, they're inserting pigment further into the layers of the skin. This is really done more so very superficially. Um, and over 12 to 18 months, it usually will actually totally disappear. And if clients were happy with their results, they'll come back again. Okay. Um, we, Not something. Yeah, um, yeah. We had, um, <laughs> right now, on the table of uses, it does not qualify um, this particular area. Um, and as I spoken with our town planner again today, we talked about this. Uh, the building inspector said you're in, he denied it um, and he sent several letters and back and forth and whatever um, so I think what it came down to is um, if the, there is nothing the license comes from the state coming from the state um, it's issued coming from the Board of Health, who is our representative to you, or in the middle of this, um, we need to get some clarification of what the use is. And um, in the discussion uh, that I had with the town planner uh, today, um, was that if we had something from the health department uh, to base what you're requesting on or we had something that was issued in the same area uh, prior we could use it as a reference so we've asked for material to be presented to us this evening and I think the board members have that mm -hmm. um, and basically what is defining the practice that you're asking to be used is defined by the state, is enforced basically by, correct me if I'm wrong as we go through this, is enforced by our, our health agent. Um, and in the past, we did issue a similar uh, special permit for this uh, to another entity, um, which gave it more or less a, a reference but there was a, uh, a continuity of licensing through the state, to the town, to the health agent, that the board can then fall back on to give back to you for the special permit. Otherwise, we don't have anything to work from. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that was a question I had, number one. Uh, in order to perform this, yeah service microblading mm -hmm. uh, do you have to be trained in this and, and then certified by the state or? yes so, um, so you have to go through the you have to be an esthetician first so you have to have full training on um, the skin you have to have your license so you, um, and this license is through the state yeah for okay. cosmetology um, so you have to have that training you have to have your license in order to go to this um, it was a three-day course um, which Prior to, I took the course last summer. Okay. It was a little slow on getting things moving. Um, when I took, I came to the town prior to taking the course to ask, you know, will I be able to, it was a $3,000 course that I spent money on for three mm -hmm. days, and I wanted to make sure that that money wasn't going to go to waste. So I came here, I knew that it was already in the town, I came here, I found out what I needed and in the year that I took my time to actually get this all nailed down, um, you now need a two-year apprenticeship, which I don't have. However, I have two people interested who have quite a few years of experience mm -hmm. um, doing this. And I've been going back and forth with them, and I actually went to the Board of Health first, and I got um, all the information from them about what I was going to need. But now that's why I'm here first instead of continuing through with the Board of Health because 
some of the things that need to be done. Um, I need a machine that's going to cost me about mm. fifteen hundred to two thousand um, dollars for sanitation purposes. Um, that could possibly be non-refundable once I purchase it. So um, again, that's yeah. why I'm here first and not. I have everything, and I will have everything. I have all the numbers for um, you know waste disposal and all that right. that would fall under the board of health. Right. Um, but again, I don't want to want any vaccinations are required and, you know, to then do all that and then find out that it wouldn't be approved. Yeah. Well, the, so they directed me. Well, what, I, what I was getting at, I, I look at this and then you do, you go to the town bylaws and certainly it's not specifically mentioned mm -hmm. in there. I mean, the town bylaws, to me, if you tried to mention everything that somebody was going to do, you, you'd have a document 500 pages uh, right. thick. And it's a newer... It's kind of ridiculous. Newer uh, service in the cosmetology right. world. Exactly. It's a new service, so the bylaws would have to play catch-up on that. But I think there's... Uh, it, it just notes in the bylaws that it is a legal use, by right, mm -hmm. a professional service. I don't know why it can't be considered a professional service. It looks like Andrew's ready to tell me why. I almost thought the same, but Glenn, Glenn argued that because of the permanent makeup and tattooing name attached to it, um, even though that, as she said, it's semi-permanent. So we have that in our table of uses. The last one is a use substantially similar to a by right use, so. To a by law use. Yes. Yes. So this use classifies similar to a by right use in Glenn's eyes, which was the professional okay. service or consumer retail professional. Okay, well that's what I so thought to me. It could either be plan. that, it could fall under that, or it could fall under professional right. service. Those the two. So then my question is, why do we need to issue a special permit? Why just can't we make just a finding according saying that the, we, the board finds that this is a uh, use substantially according similar to, or to or the table? Exactly. Yeah. It's so the special yeah. permit by the CBA, not just a finding that it is a professional service. It's a special permit granted. But it, okay, okay. I, I, uh, but do, do, I guess then the next question is, she's already has a business there, mm -hmm. the Reading Professional Building. Mm -hmm. Did you have to get a special permit to open your business there? Um, I had to go through the Board of Cosmetology. No, I didn't have to get a special no. permit. No. no. I had to go through the Board of Cosmetology. She's allowed to have that by right. Right. Is that right? Yes. So why wouldn't she have, why wouldn't she have a professional, and, it's a professional service. Right. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> to me, it, it, we, we start she getting into these. Things. You call it professional service? It's a consumer service? It's right. a consumer yeah. service. Professional it's service. service. So I it's guess a, it's a service similar to other things that are allowed by right. I guess to me, it's a finding. I, right. I don't know. But. I would agree. With, I agree with that. So I would agree with that, except that the bylaw states special permit for use substantially similar to so that's what Glenn's finding was that it's similar to the professional service for whatever okay. reason well, well, yep. well. continue on I will take a look at this okay that, okay yep something can continue yep. Sorry. did you have I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know what we need to do to just say it because I think we, I certainly would agree that what you're doing falls under this umbrella. Right. Mm -hmm. It really does. And in fact, we've approved, the, we did approve a permit back in 2013 for a similar right. place mm -hmm. to allow them to do tattooing. Right, even more so than Which that. is even more right. intensive than mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So, right. I mean, you know, I, I don't have a fundamental problem, but the I'm question is, how do we grant you by, by what route to allow you to move forward? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Well, one of the discussions today was, and somebody, did, did you mention, somebody mentioned it, that there's probably 500 different entity or, or uses under our bylaws that you can't list. It's just too much 
yeah. black ink on there, you'll never be able to cover it all, and tomorrow there'll be more. Yeah. So the substantial aspect of it is, I think, where Glenn is coming from. At least that's what I got from talking to Glenn a week ago before he went on vacation. Uh, so now, uh, because this was done very much similar to this, if we could get a, a verification from the state licensor, licensing board that this is the process to go through, the town accept the license that you had uh, in opening up the business, uh, that if it's within the realm of what the license from the state that trumps whatever we have here, except our bylaw specific, and Glenn is going by bylaw specific, and you're going to that section of the bylaws that's substantially the same by special permit. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to go. Um, coming to the board this evening, I I could have talked the coin. <laughs> Um, I don't know. What does the board want to do, I, I guess? Exactly. That, that's what I say. It isn't up to Glenn. It's, he shoved it up here because he or pushed it to us because he didn't right. want to make the decision. Right. <laughs> Just and like I said. So that's he fine. wants us to make it, and so we'll sit there and make a decision whether it's a special permit required or is it just a finding that this is a professional service and it's granted by right under mm -hmm. the bylaws under Business B zone. And validated basically because of the licensure from the state, yeah. which trumps. So what even if we you give her a special permit, she can't immediately go and do the microplane. She still has to be approved by the state. Right. So yeah, right. She does. Yeah, and she has That's to correct. Board, board of health uh, yes. meet board of health criteria. Right. Yeah. So yeah. And actually now. From this point forward, if this goes forward, we make a finding tonight or whatever, and she gets the license, and there's a problem. The enforcement officer is the Board of Health. Board of Health. It is not the building inspector. Right. It is not this board. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm I'm very, I'm very comfortable. Um, doing another finding. I don't have a problem with that at all, even though there is something here, and I think that that should be discussed if the board decides to go that route, should be also discussed um, at community development. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay. If this is the second time we allow this, that mm -hmm. should be able to well, call well, it a professional you know, That's service. what I was questioning in regards to, you know, what, what, what does this take to be able to do it in regards to education? And you know, obviously she has to be licensed, certified by the state. Uh, you have to have so many years of experience, so that's why she won't be able to do it. She has to have somebody else do it that has the experience already, and then in a couple of years she'll have her experience, et cetera, et cetera. It's, uh, she's a professional, I consider. Yeah. And she provides a professional right. service. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But. My aesthetics license. I took this um, 600 hours. So, um, Catherine Hines, which is located in Woburn, um, right behind this <coughs> park, kind of. Um, you can do 300, 600, 900, or 1200. Um, however, when you go to the 1200, you're considered. Um, yeah, you're doing lasers and mm -hmm. different things like that. Um, Massachusetts actually currently only requires 300 hours of training. Um, we're one of the only states um, in the U.S. that doesn't require 300. Um, 600 is what most states require. And when I did go to school, I did do the 600 thinking that, you know, eventually it would move in that direction anyways. Okay. Um, I didn't see anybody who took an oath who wanted to speak, but I'll, I'll ask again public a section of the uh, the hearing uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak seeing nobody standing forward um, I'll come back and close the subject matter to, uh, the public hearing to close and ask the board um, I think uh, I've spoken you know my standing on yep. it. I don't know maybe any no other questions I have not, nothing else to add. <laughs> I, I agree with the board. Okay. Yeah.
to, to me, a matter of deciding whether we find or grant a special permit or all of the above. Yeah. Well, that's that's yeah. that's what I'm trying to find out. I, okay. I'm looking at. She's asked for a special permit, and I, I agree. What Andrew says it. If, if she were coming here and saying, okay, this is a use substantially similar to da 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 da, it would need a special permit. It's, it's pretty clear right. there. Right. But to me, it's a professional service. Right. And you go to the boss, and it's a professional service. Doesn't require that. Is re, in a business B district is granted right. by right. Right. So, so she doesn't need a special permit to my way of thinking. And that's that what I would make a, a finding for. Yeah. Sure. Well, the professional services that that the town of Reading granted her uh, permission to open up a facility is based upon a site, a, a state licensure, mm -hmm. which she has and she had to present to open up the business. Mm -hmm. So, in the state licensure, it it includes everything, including microblading. Yes. Um, Tattooing, I mean, all the rest of that is considered into the professional, quote, professional service. So the professional services is, de is defined by the state in the licensure in coming to us, um, basically, um, or coming to the, to the town, it is accepted that. So I would agree that uh, doing a finding that uh, this is part of the professional service as recognized by the state is sufficient and um, therefore uh, does not need to go any further. It just makes the finding that we find out that that, that is part of the professional services. Okay. Agreed. Okay, fine. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think you stated it well, John, and I would make a motion to that effect that uh, this uh, be a finding rather than a special permit. Uh, we, we make a finding that this uh, microblading as part of her business is in fact part, a, of, professional is part of the professional services granted in her license by the state. Yeah. Okay. So you make I'll make motion. that motion. Yeah. Second. So you'll second that. Yes. Any other discussion? No discussion. All in favor. Okay. So we will make a finding. There will be no permit issued or anything. John can explain that. And, uh, um, so basically what we have on tap right now is your initial application <coughs> for a special permit under section 532 and 547. So with the board making a finding on that this evening, I'm going to ask you if you wish to withdraw without prejudice your application for a special permit under 532 and 547. Okay. Okay. Could we say we're, we're yeah. I'll, I'll make that motion that we the allow the does not consider a special permit necessary and yeah, that can yeah, that can be the, right. Agree. You willing to write that up too? Yeah, I'll okay. write that up too. It's okay. It could because the board is good without putting that forth yeah. and we're saying if you're requesting to withdraw that we need to close the case mm -hmm. and the that's case before close. us is open right now so we need to close it that's how we close it sure. withdraw without prejudice um motion is made by boss mm -hmm. um, yeah to allow those second. second all, second. all in favor again to withdraw five zero yeah. zero okay so that closes that one so i don't have to give you anything thank you very much <laughs> okay. yeah. Now, you will have to go back to see the building inspector okay. to work that out, uh, in what room you're using and all the rest of it, because he had major concerns on what you're using, whether it was equipped and all the rest of it. But the professional services that you're using now, that's between you and he. Okay, so still go back to him before board uh, well, oh, yeah. the Board of Health, the Board of Health is, is going to be looking for, I mean, I would touch base with her, definitely. Um, it, it'll take us 14, well, it won't take us 14 days, but and then there's a 20-day appeal period uh, that goes with this, and the only thing that they're appealing is your withdrawal and our Um Anything else would be a, um, a, a decision against the building inspector's decision or the board's decision. Mm -hmm. And that would be in the appeals process. You should be all set. Thank you. Okay. 
Now how am I going to write this one? <laughs> Case is case number 18 to 20, uh, which is 24 Hanscom Street. And um, we previous didn't we previously open this case? I don't think so. No. Okay. Then the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Wall Street, Reading, Mass, on Wednesday, November 7, 2018, at 7 p.m. on the application of Thomas Shirley on behalf of Nick and Catherine Radakia. Radakia. Um, Pursuant to Mass General Laws 40A, Section 9, for special permit under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 532 and 547, to raise the existing home and construct a two story single family dwelling with an attached accessory apartment at the property located at 24 Hanscom Ave in Reading, Mass. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that abutters were notified as for. The uh, Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of uh, Linfield, Stone, and Wilmington, Newton, North Reading, and Wakefield. Testimony given for this board is taken under oath, so if you wish, may wish to speak, uh, please stand and raise your right hand. And again, it doesn't hurt. Okay. 
I swear that the testimony given before me and this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. Okay. You are sworn in. Um, so, Mr. Hurt, Mr. Hurley. Mr. Hurley, yes. Um, you have the floor. I have the floor. Well, I'm here representing Kathy Nick in the Jackie and Mason have wanted off, okay? And uh, Kathy's been a lifelong resident here and uh, we're basically going to take that 1969 home and turn it into a, a beautiful new home. Nick, uh, graduate uh, No. 2 Reading Rocket, is coming back home with his wife and his young son. You know, looking for a special permit for an accessory apartment. I think uh, we showed it Kristen, she had a couple of questions I think I answered you guys. We had a small task on Monday. I've been in contact with Glenn. Uh, we, we deal with the plans, which I've already got the demo permit done. We got the foundation permit all, all processed. So uh, um, I think my package was pretty uh, inclusive. I think I don't get a chance to review it, but the plot plan showing the existing structural overlay from Hayes Engineering to the new one. Now that, this property also has, and I, I reached Kat Kwani and Patricia reached out to me, just some drainage concerns, which I'm always, we're always cognizant of that as we build. Um, there was an existing catch basin on that property that was put in by Kathy's uh, grandpa. It's functioning, it's in good shape. I reviewed that with the town engineer, Peter Reinhardt, and, um, and Ryan, uh, there, there is no, we're having some great, we've had a good test over the last week or two. Everything's, the soil is perfect, excellent. They've had no water issues. We're putting in a complete perimeter drain, tying in all of our, um, all of our leaders to that system, running it to the existing um, on-site catch basin. I know when I talked to Connie and Trish, they mentioned they tied into a, to a, well, I think it was winter, uh, existing catch basin. If you don't have that option, you have to cut the property. I did bring it up to the town engineer. They looked at it with me. This really doesn't make sense for that property on 20 Point Hanscom. I don't see this being a problem. Um, right now, we should be able to contain all the fog. Right now, the, the, the existing house had no, it didn't capture any runoff. It had no um, no perimeter drain system, and there was no, I think they, they put that in that corner of the lot to try to be a little preemptive for those snow melts those long-term water issues, but uh, well, and I, you don't fall under that water management uh, criteria. I've been instructed by Cades Engineering, but that's where we, it's not one of the things we have to do, but if you're going that extra step, obviously I don't want any water in, in the house I'm building for them. We do unfinished basement, the man cave, as he's calling it, so we're going the extra step. We want to keep happy neighbors. And, uh, is there any questions that I, I can help you guys with. Yeah, but, uh. Well, I'm going to start. Normally, I don't. But, um, there has been some issues uh, brought up um, that you have taken down. You've taken down the house, the existing house. Correct. Um, that is done at your correct um, peril. peril. Absolutely. Yes. Actually, it's not yours. It's the applicant's yeah. peril. So should the board not approve the special permit, they're without a house and all the rest of it. So yeah. you uh, talked with the building inspector I mean, about I this. Oh, yeah, he absolutely. told you that th this was at your peril, absolutely. but you may go ahead and do that. Correct. Um, okay, so that everybody understands, absolutely. including the board. Because when I first right. when I went out there today, it's the, you see foundation there being poured. Uh, with forms, yeah, yeah, being poured. Yeah, exactly. And I saw right after the application came in, and the house was still there. So when I went by it a second time, it was gone. <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to get that clarified before we go any further. This is not the normal process. I understand that. I had extensive discussions with Glenn to what, you know, what the structure size, shape, or whatever, what the internals would be whether we are approved or not, obviously, we're, you know, that's, you know, we know where we're headed, you know, we're coming here for approval, and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, we made all the necessary exterior adjustments, and uh, I'm also trying to beat some of the white conditions, and we've got a little late start, nothing, nothing, right. the horse fault, all ours, trying to 
All right, you all yeah. right, thanks. Okay. Seen some discussions with Glenn as I move along. You know, footprint sizes, all the setbacks, all the other criterias. Well, we have the, the plans, both the architectural and the uh, surface plan, plan. Yeah, it's part of the uh, so it's part of the package that you provide. Part of the package, yeah. And you're, this is the same plan as uh, you're going on, which was submitted on September 25th. Correct. No changes. No changes. Okay. Sorry. Any questions? Well, I mean, we're going to build a house there. No matter what we do tonight, they're here for an accessory apartment. That's right. That's so if we don't build an accessory apartment, then they're going to rebuild the house there without an accessory apartment and re redo the drawing. We're not okay. concerned with the building of the house. Right. We're concerned right. with the accessory so, apartment. So, right. you know. That's the only portion that we're talking about right. this evening. Yeah. So, you know. and, and typically, we have the applicant go through the criteria for the that are required under uh, in 54.7. Uh, there is a listing of criteria that's required for an accessory apartment mm -hmm. and generally we like you to go through that step by step you know that uh, it's going to it's going to be less than the uh, floor criteria or yeah, we say yeah if you would yeah absolutely um, uh, criteria a yeah only one accessory apartment per lot may be created. We've uh, met that. We're only proposing one principal. Okay. And one attached accessory apartment. Okay, B, the accessory apartment shall not have a gross floor area not to exceed the lesser of 1,000 square feet or one third of the gross floor area of the principal single family dwelling. We're, uh, we're right, you look like you're substantially less. Substantially less. Right, that's to that. Okay, now C, at least one of the owners shall reside on site, either the principal accessory apartment. Exactly. The uh, who's who's going to the is the principal owner going to be in the accessory yeah, apartment? Kathy. Yeah, that's Kathy. That's for son Nick. Okay, who's going to be the principal owner? That'll be my, That'd be, my wife. That'll be okay. Yeah. In the accessory. Yeah. Okay. Just just trying to yeah. clarify that. All well, stairways to an accessory apartment located on the second and third floor must be inside the principal single family dwelling. That's not applicable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where two or more entrances already exist on the front of the side of the principal single family dwelling, modifications must be made to make the principal side primary. And the accessory size secondary, we did make that change. We did redraw that with one of his input, so mm -hmm. we hid that door on the corner. All the motor vehicles, including that of the accessory apartment, shall be parked off street in a designated driveway garage. And there shall only be one access driveway to put a lot. That's in conformance. We've got uh, garage spaces and the driveway access. Mm -hmm. H would be both of the principal and accessory property shall be connected to the public water and sanitary sewer systems. We've actually gone the extra step. I replaced the sewer line, upgraded that up to the street. And okay. We'll notice that. We'll put a new water line in. So under the direction of Peter and, uh, and Ryan. Okay. Uh, the accessory property may not be occupied by more than three people, nor have more than two bedrooms. That's so one bedroom. <laughs> okay. Kathy, Jay, any application for a special permit? The accessory apartment to be located in a carriage house, state, and yeah. barn, or public not detached applicable. structure. That's not applicable. And K glass would be our detached accessory. The apartment should not be located on the exterior wall. The principal single family dwelling will be ready right away. That also, yeah. Okay, thank you. That's uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to hear. You know, go go mm -hmm. through those criteria, and uh, it appears they've met all the criteria for an accessory apartment, uh, especially a interior one, you might say, or in uh, uh, an attached accessory apartment. Well, uh, it, 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 more than attached, it's interior to it. it. It certainly looks like a just a large single-family house there, uh, according to the architectural plans. Mm -hmm. so. I'm comfortable with it. Comfortable. Okay. Nick. Yeah, I'm also comfortable. I mean, you got the setbacks, the dimensional controls look good. I mean, just went over all the standards. I'm comfortable with all of it. Likewise, thank you. Close. Okay. Um, 
I look at it uh, as presented, and uh, as I said before on an earlier one, it's the new construction that has me concerned uh, for the future. Um, and we, we need to find some language that um, protects um, both the applicant, but also because we're talking about something that's going to be passed on too. And right now it's within the family, but later on it may not be. And once this gets built, um, there needs to be verification that the accessory apartment as, is as planned here, and that becomes part of the conditions. We just don't have that last part of the condition yet. And the, as the um, planner, uh, town planner, has suggested, uh, we will, or you will, be talking with the rest of the department about that mm -hmm. uh, to tighten this up as we go along. Mm -hmm because we're getting more and more into that all the time. Uh, well, that's the, uh, the part of the board. Um, I open it up to public comment and see if anybody wishes to comment on the request that's being made before us this evening. It's me again. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I've known these folks for a long, long time, and they're neighbors of ours. And I think they've done a really good job of taking a double site and working with it under the constraints of all the regulations and setbacks and whatever. So we don't have any real issues with it at all. And it's great to have families moving back to the neighborhoods where they were originally raised, which we wish we could do more of. But for a lot of reasons, people can't afford to move back or whatever the other issue might be. But We've looked at all the details, and, and we think it makes we think it would be a great addition to the neighborhood, so assuming they satisfy all the other malarkey. <laughs> and you have the reason to the bylaw. Uh, yes. My name is Connie Clark, and I live at 17 Winter Avenue. I'm a neighbor of Kathy's, and I know Nick. And uh, we haven't had a chance to look at any of the details, so uh, I did talk with Tom, and I have some concerns about the drainage. We did do a lot of work around our home because the area at the bottom of the three properties, Kathy's line and the Hoyts, floods out. And since we did the work, it hasn't flooded. Uh, at one point, the Hoyts basement got flooded because that basin area filled up so much and flooded their basement. So I did talk with Tom about that. You know, the uh, structure is much larger as I saw the foundation there and so that means there's going to be a lot more runoff and less ground for the groundwater to soak it in. So I'm here to just make it public. That's my concern. I don't want to have to spend more of my money or have anybody's buildings flood because of that. And I did talk to you about some of the work where they put a lot of dirt onto our fence, mm -hmm. and you said you take care of it, and it's not been pulled well, that's away. Well, come back. It's going to be pulled down. But it's been it's there cool. for a while, and I want to make sure my yeah. property is sure to yeah. yeah. be Absolutely. Do that. So anyway, I, I, Kathy, and I have a great relationship, and I, I'm not here to make any problems or anything, but I just want it to be on the record that that is a concern of mine. And you talked about the catch basin that you say works. However, until we did work on that property, that catch basin didn't do very much. So well, just that's to, a concern. Just to get this on the record, too, that the, the drainage, permanent drainage, potted lens, building commissions, uh, inspection process, and that, that includes a permanent drain around the footing, which is, in, in, in our case, is going to be six and a half feet down that captures all of the gutter water okay so the water right now that existing house was all surface ran nothing went down below surface so now we're capturing everything six feet below surface we're going to we're going to bring that to that catch basin that was never done before so we're going to we're going to assist by making we're going that extra step i'm used to all the stormwater management calcs when i do the subdivisions so i kind of know that we do it anyway but it's also part of the town's Finds requirement. He comes out and checks that. He's one of the only guys that does it, believe it or not, to make sure I do all that work. So is that in essence a French drain solution? Pretty to much, yeah. And we tie, we and tie the basin's it. got the capacity to handle 
Okay, that one does, does. Okay. Except sure. for an elevation in the- And we're all landfill in that area, so. Yes. We're all up all over great water. It's good soil, it's good drink. Yeah, it's yeah, good yeah. tested pretty well. And, you know, I was very happy how you know, it worked. And it's not even really a much more- In the islands, we create cisterns and we capture all that water. Yeah. Free so well, it's a different low solution. But yeah, we're down low enough, we should, we're going to be in good shape. Yeah. We're going to improve the drain. So, and that's actually a big improvement. So when I talked with the town too, they said, uh, as long as you don't change the topography of the land, then there shouldn't be any uh, reason to you know, for me to have any concern. But I don't know. I don't. I've never seen that kind of construction up close. Yeah. Huge mounds. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about. They'll all disappear, but it, the size will shrink. It'll only back built. It's scary like that. Yeah, it's scary like that. It's always like that. But yeah, it'll, 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 it'll reduce the size. But before that, we have the whole perimeter system. We water from the foundation, drains around. We, and I, I line up where I run, run all my gutter water to capture anything that's coming off the house as well. I don't want any, we're doing a finished basement. Last thing I get called is to get water. For me, there's absolutely. <laughs> I called you right back. That's all I have to say. I'm a very proactive builder, so if you ever ask me, you can call me, I'll call you right back. Okay. Once we get everything cleaned up, I'll talk to the other neighbors. I'm a, I'm a hands-on, proactive guy, so whatever I can do to assist, you know, they can't be neighbors, you know, it's a good experience for everyone. The board, the board can't get involved in that aspect of it because we're only being asked to do one thing. Does this meet? the standards expressed in the Reading Zone bylaws and anything covered by Chapter 40A. And if the board uh, proves that, then it goes to the next level. The next level is the engineering, uh, the building inspector, uh, building commissioner, uh, any, um, any other issues for the structure itself and, and or the property. That's out of our hands. We're just doing the zoning aspect of it. So this would, you'd have to take this to um, Glenn. I didn't know, I didn't know what. No, it's so right. that's, that's okay, it's kind of yes. 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 Um, I'm glad it came out here and, and you, 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 under, you understand, but I, it appears right now that Mr. Hurley, uh, on behalf of the applicant, wants to make everything right. Um, and he's he's going beyond what the, the, the town is requiring right now, according to the engineering aspects of it. But okay, okay. Uh, anybody else wishes to uh, make comment? Seeing none, uh, close the subject matter of the public hearing, and we'll go back to the board. Um, any other questions that the board may have? I'll entertain a motion then to move forward on this one way or the other. I can do it. Yeah. Right. Uh, a motion to grant the applicant, Thomas Early, um, a special permit uh, under sections 532 and sections 5. 472 to build an accessory dwelling at uh, 24 Hanscom Avenue um, in I don't think the sheets are numbered yeah. or anything. Yeah. All right, as depicted on the plot plan by Hayes Engineering yeah. at 603 Salem Street, Wakefield, Mass. Uh, dated 9, date, uh, revised as of September 18, 2018, along with the architectural drawings, um, sheets A100 through A3.04. And also condition a special permit upon the following. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation. Well, they already, you already got your foundation permit. Uh, do we need those? Do we need these conditions? I don't know if we need those conditions because the house has already been yeah. Yeah, permitted. Yeah. 
And it, this is just the apartment within that house. Yeah, I talked to Glenn. Okay. We're going to make an amended submission. I'm going to submit an amended yeah. permit once the appeals permit. But I think it brings up a good point, Nick, uh, and I'll ask John, maybe, maybe Andrew. Will they require two occupancy permits now because of this? Uh, you know, for the main house and for the accessory apartment? So. so we can have that as a condition yeah. that it, uh, everything full be able, occupancy yeah, full occupancy permit. Full occupancy permit be uh, required before they... Uh, before the uh, so that would yeah. be our typical third condition. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. So the petitioner shall submit as well plans to the building inspector showing the completed mm -hmm. construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit for the accessory dwelling for both for both, both units structures. Both, both structures both structures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we hear a second? Second Kyle. Kyle. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we ready for the vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. Again, let me stand for some plans. Yes. Could I still that big clip to see if you're a little bit cool? That big clip there, that black tank piece of clips. You for it? Yeah. You can have both. Thank you. Post one. Mr. Hurley, don't leave you. Nope, nope. Oh, you want a you want a copy of the stamp plan? Yes. I didn't make it so controversial, so John was kind of quiet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Decision, is decision has to be written for when, when they get yeah, so it's about a month. Yes. I need a second copy of the architecture. Of the what? Oh, okay. Because I'm not going to take your thing apart. <laughs> right.
trouble. Which one? Uh, Wong Trouble. Wong 65. That's uh, the I am. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. finding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. yeah I'll do Longfellow and Ash. Yeah. yeah. So does that mean now if someone else comes back from microblading, I can just <laughs> tell them it's a professional service? I would say, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, well, I think we could, I mean, <laughs> it's I, I think you can see where we're going. On. I yeah, agree, but, yeah, uh, so, yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah. You know, every time they come up with something new, right. uh, you know, <laughs> a dentist needs to do a, uh, you know, like I, I was in the desert adult fluoride treatment. <laughs> now, does that mean that, oh, geez, yeah, that wasn't right. the original for me, I should go back for that? Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kind of professional service. Right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, um, still got some homework to do. We have some other business before the board. Um, we have case number um, 18. Um, right. 15. Just minutes. Green Street. Um, the Green Street continued. Which is 18 10? No. 15. 18 15. Yeah, they continued to the next. Meeting. Which is. Uh, 18 10 was Longfellow that I'm looking Okay. Uh, they've, they've requested a uh, continuance. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a date certain, so it's un unfortunately uh, we have to put a date certain in there. 12. Five. Yep. Yeah. So it would be what what date are we moving that to? To December fifth. Okay. Okay. So I need a motion to that effect. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, that we move case number eighteen fifteen twenty eight Green Street to the agenda on uh, would you say December fifth? Yeah. Uh, 2018 at the request of the applicant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I second. So I second. All in favor? 500. That wraps up the cases for this evening. Mm -hmm. Now we still have some business before the board. Um, we have some minutes. The person has been slaving over. Uh, we'll start off with the one on um, 7 of 18. That was the uh, ODB. Uh, anybody spot with me? I haven't had a chance to read it, to be honest with you. Okay. I don't have a folder on Green Street, so will you put that on the card? Mm
Anything? Uh, no, I did a quick look. Yeah, oh, I, okay. I didn't see anything, John. This is the, okay. uh, the, the uh, July eighteenth. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm fine uh, with it. I only spotted yeah. two little things. Um, one is uh, page three. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, four paragraphs from the bottom. Ms. Delio stated he was referencing, I think he meant she was oh. referencing. Yeah. Second line in that, it uh, starts with Mr. Given stated that there weren't a need for an elevator. Mm -hmm. I think that was, he yeah. meant she. Okay. And on the next page, um, third paragraph down, fourth line down at the end of the line, they noted the site distance evaluation was found to be adequate that, and that if one, I think you meant section were moved. Yep. And I had extra time today. <laughs> Motion to accept the uh, minutes as amended. Moved. So moved. Go ahead. Yep. Nick. Second. Second. Nick seconds. Good. All in favor? Five zero zero. Bob then knock. Second one was on the uh, eighth of uh, <coughs> first of uh, August. August. <coughs> I didn't spot anything here. Uh, I did on the first page. Okay. Down at the bottom. Well, it starts off up above by saying only four members are present. You explain yep. that to everybody. And then down below, two, one, two, third paragraph down there, it says in front of the applicants, there were only three board members. Correct. Present tonight. The, 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 blah, blah, blah. I don't know why you just couldn't sh strike that whole sentence. You want to just strike it? Just take it out. Sure. Which one? Huh? Mr. Dreamer informed the applicants that there were only three board members present tonight for their case and that Four they cannot there. continue with three members. And then you could just take that one out, I would suggest, yeah. and then leave the other one in there, which is kind of true. Okay. You know? Mm. Well, did Lewis Street have to come back because we didn't have a quorum? I think that was the problem that one of them didn't sit. Couldn't, yeah, vote or. Uh, or did, uh, see, who was there for that one? Uh, or did, uh, no, everybody was. Yeah, yeah, was one of the four members so. not in a position to I think it might have vote? Then I think that's what it was. Because they didn't listen to the. Right. Previous case, but that's the one that we had. That, um, did you miss that? No, no. Was it that could be with the attempt behind that? I think that's that what there it were was. four people so present, but only one of them, only three of them, were could be qualified to vote. Was the very first one? So that paragraph made that sentence we took out made it made the appropriate. I think so. Or it's incomplete. It meant to read that only three board members were able to vote, but you needed four. Only three voting members right. were right. present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eligible voting members were present. Maybe that's what so, yeah. yeah, there were only three voting members. This must have been heard earlier. Yeah, and continued. Yeah, yeah it was a continuous. continuous. So yeah. Okay, so and somebody didn't see right. the prior. But I think I remember mm -hmm. that one of these cases person who didn't see it, I thought it was Eric, saw the tape, maybe. I, I maybe, said that okay, it was not with regard to this case, it was another case. Oh, it was a different case? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty sure. Why don't we hold that one out until we check that? Yeah. And see which one see what showed up that night. I don't know. It's, well, this says what showed up. Okay. Okay. On vacation. Yeah. Oh, what are you on vacation, Bob? You missed the July meeting, didn't you? I June, no, July. not in July. I missed uh, January, uh, June. 
I was uh, vacationing the end of June. Yeah, it would have been the, I believe, the second meeting in June, probably. 20th. Was it, I remember the date. It was the 20th. Yeah. You were gone. Okay, yeah. Well, I was we'll sitting here wondering where you were, but <laughs> that yeah. was, that's yeah. right. That was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so long ago. <laughs> 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 You could leave. You could. I do know if yeah. I don't know if Lewis Tree was brought up at on the twentieth of June when I wasn't here. But well, the four people that were present that night are sitting here right now. Yeah. <laughs> so one of us was ineligible. Uh, and it might it have been me. If, if Lewis Tree was the, the first time it was brought up was the date June twentieth. Correct. That might have been it. That might yeah. have been it. Yeah. That I could know. So that sentence could stay in. Just say there are only three eligible board members. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Voting eligible members. I don't know how you want to say it. Yeah, but then four people voted, no. and there's only four of us there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. that works. But that's that's that that no, 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 no. I, I think I recall it now. I, I sat in on it, and I did. I missed it. But there was a substantial change from the June 20th one that you people first heard, and so it was like starting all over again. And that happened a couple times, I think. Yeah. So it was like a. Okay. You know, and so everybody felt okay. You know, we'll start from square one again on this yeah, night. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Then, yeah, I think that's. I think you're right. That's that's what it was. I uh, <laughs> I think it was so, first opened on the 20th of June, but then it uh, there were some changes made, and they came back and gave a whole new presentation. Because the rest of it was. Um, the board explain the board cannot approve the stamp plans that are explicit to what is the purpose to be done. Is proposed to be done. Yeah, there was see there was a new new plot plan provided it looks like that on yep. uh, uh, August first. That's why it was continued again. Yeah. Okay, so we allowed we allowed what he came in to drop off to the board. We just moved to continue. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you can still take out that sentence. You uh, might be able to then. Yeah. After there was. We could take out uh, the three plan. board members present. Yeah, I think right. Pretty much take the side there. Yeah. <laughs> just that one sentence. Take mm, it out. Yeah. And I had one other one okay. on page two okay. under Longfellow. One, two, three, four, five, sixth paragraph down. I just put a big question mark there. I'm not sure I understood that whole paragraph. Mr. Dorema advised the applicant the options to proceed or continue. Mr. Welsh stated he'd like to start with a continuance and ask if the public could speak. Then you opened the discussion to the board first. Yeah, it's kind of Garbled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is really asked if the public can speak. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Oh, because the end is really. This was the second? This was, yeah, this was a continuance too, right? Was this was the second. That was the yeah. first. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know what they're to Only four members, so that's the options to proceed or continue is because it was four members. Mr. Welsh stated he'd like to start with continuing so he asked if the public can speak. I think he wanted, um, Dan Ensminger was here. Exactly. The public, and I think he wanted him to be able to say what he wanted He didn't know if he'd be back again, so he wanted somebody to speak on his behalf. Yeah. Right, on how old the property was. Yes. Yes. Oh. And he did that, that's that two paragraphs down. Two paragraphs down. down. And Mr. Ensminger spoke on, uh, as the matter was stated. Mm hmm On the first of August. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> and I think the The other issue on 815 I had written in the card was there was no posting for a possible variance on it. Mm -hmm. Right, and I it was coming back for the, for the correct. It, he came for a special permit, right. not a variance, and the building inspector had mentioned something about a variance. So I have on the card here that it was continued for a possible reposting for, for right. a variance. Right, and I think we reposted it. So we continued the case even though we, had, we took in some mm -hmm. um, Okay. Okay. Then on the last page, you have, you have a question mark under seconded by Mr. Yeah. Seconded by Mr. Yeah. And then at the very bottom of Joan, it was 856. Okay. So those are the two questions I had on it. But. Who seconded? Bob. Anything else in this point? I would just strike off the XPM. Why do you need to save the time? We always, we always do. You have to? Yeah. Great. Right. Open and open and shine the case. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to pick a time? 856. I like that. You have it? <laughs> yeah. You have it? Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because you're a lot okay. of memory, I'll tell you that. Um, wow. Motion to ex I had to go back and look at it. <laughs> oh, you had to go back to the tape. Yeah. Oh, cool. <coughs> uh, motion, motion to accept um, with the uh, corrections. Moved. August moved. 1st. This was uh, August 1st. Yeah. Moved. So moved. Kyle. Oh, Kyle moved. Okay. Oh. Can I? I wasn't attending yet. Those meetings. No, you can't. Oh, you weren't. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> I moved to accept. The okay. Of that. <laughs> Nick. Second. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I made so, so move. All right. All right. All right. Four zero zero. zero. <laughs> okay. Moving along. Moving right along. The next one was eight fifteen. I only have one comment to make. My name is all through this thing, and I was not here. Copy and paste. Oh, up in Sebago Lake in Maine. <laughs> this is the one you missed. Okay. <laughs> but I'm all over the thing. No, oh, you aren't. Are you? Absolutely. Well, he's in I members present. present. I've amended things. I've, I've he's down at the bottom. Things. <laughs> <laughs> he voted. I voted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, good thing you picked it out because I, I wasn't looking it out by <laughs> What were you doing that evening? <laughs> she should go back. I know what I was doing. Fix that. Back, but, you know, we thing. just missed you. Ah, you know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to check that one out? Um, did you make comments on this too? Huh? You didn't make any I didn't make any comments. No. That's why you weren't here. Okay, but, but so I, but just I, had to take you from the, the votes then. Yeah, 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 but I voted. Yeah. So we take you out of each vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yep. Yes, yes. Oh. I think we spelled Lyle's, Kyle's name wrong too. On the last. Talking about on the nine five. On the last page. Mm -hmm. Just, just on the motion just before other business, it's torn over the knee. Mm. Talking about on the nine five? Huh? Talking. I'm talking about eight the Toronto one motion made by Prince, seconded by myself. Which makes it a silent W and an E. 
Oh yeah. So let's hit either. You vote on these. And I second that one. Right. And I should have voted on that too. Right. I was present, so maybe swap my name. That's what's happened. Is my name That's not on any of these? Yeah. Uh, I think he's standing on all. Okay, that's what that's what they were. That's why you get the number, but not yeah. the people. Just replace uh, replace size name with uh, Kyle's name. Motion there. Just a motion. No. Nothing. Hmm? Just a motion. Just a motion. I'll Is make a motion that up? we uh, accept the uh, minutes of uh, August fifteenth, two thousand eighteen, as amended. Your second. Second. All in favor? Four zero zero. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep sighing there. <laughs> <laughs> That's twice this is happening. <laughs> yeah. And the last one. Um, See, that one I didn't get to, so. Yeah. Did you fix that question? Yeah, I don't mark need on the yes. uh, it's the to improvements to bring the streets up to town standards. Even Lakeview. <laughs> We only found one. Page three. Second paragraph in the bottom. Okay. Diane L. Y. I thought it was I. I. Well, I'm looking through the attendees list to see if I can figure it out. Yeah, I don't think she wrote. I don't think she signed it. I don't see her. No. Except Anna. La. Sure. When you listen to it, it sounds like Avi. Didn't want to put E Y E because that doesn't make sense. Oh, really? Yeah. She didn't. She didn't. She's not. Looks listening. like she didn't sign in. She didn't sign in. I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember her getting up though. Hmm? I remember her getting up and speaking. Oh, well, you want to throw her name on the attendance list? Yeah, yeah put her on the president list then too. She's in Fifth Avenue, so. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Mr. Resident, I'm sorry.
other corrections or omissions? No, I didn't see anything else. No, just no. that one. No. Somebody else want to make a motion? I'll move to accept the minutes of the September 5th, 2018 minutes as amended. Seconded by? I'll second it. All in favor? Okay. Okay. Um, do you have anything else before the board this evening? No, um, just a quick note. We did get a new building commissioner um, that will be at Town Hall full time, including Tuesday nights. He'll attend CBA hearings. Um, when it's still with us, same goals, same times, everything like that. But now we have a full time staff member dedicated as the building commissioner. So he'll do reviews, he'll come to meetings, review zoning, all of that. So he started. So does that Monday. mean that you will continue to, to join us, or will we? I think I'm still going to come. I enjoy these things. So. <laughs> What's his name? Um, Mark. I'm not sure of the last name. Yes. <laughs> He's been here two days. Just you want to send us out? Today. You want to send us out a blast? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sure. Is that a position that's been looking to be filled for some time? Um, I think since the override and it was. Or was it because of now the Yeah, funds and then and we. Um, sent it out a few months after, weeks after. So we filled that position pretty quick, I think. And him and Glenn get along and fairly know each other. So they're good together. And he should be a pretty good addition to the team, really good addition. So he's going to be full-time building inspector? Mm -hmm. Is Glenn going to still mm -hmm. be on as part-time? Yep. And Mr. Harris? I believe he's staying, too. I think everybody's staying. Yeah. He's going to stay, too? I believe so. Okay. We're rolling. <laughs> yeah. Lots of buildings to look at. So, so then, um, who is, is Glenn the commissioner and you have two building inspectors, local building inspectors? Yeah. Well, how does that work? he's commissioner as well, so. Who? Oh. The, the new guy, Mark? Yeah. Guy. Can't have two commissioners, can you? Glenn's going to be a second. I think so. Well, that's, that's, that's for you yeah, guys to decide. Uh, <laughs> do you know what the, what the background is of the new person, individual? He has a lot of experience. I'm trying to remember the town. I'm, I was going to say Tewksbury, I thought, but he has a lot of experience, and he's been in the field for a while and seems to really know his stuff, and he's already digging into the zoning by lot and getting into that, so... He's done really good so far, as I've been told. So who will be uh, overseeing um, or writing the denial letters? I guess that it is yet to be determined. It, it could be Oh, both. you haven't got that straight enough. On out, a case, you know? yeah. I, I have no idea. Okay, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else? <laughs> Uh, just remember that we have an additional case on 1212 for the 40B. So our original hearing is 125 in the following week on 1212 okay. for 40B at Pleasant Street Center again. Yeah. We should have the so we'll have a uh, week back to back meetings, mm -hmm. week to week meetings, mm -hmm. the 5th and the 12th. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a deadline of 12 3 to submit the revised plans, and we should also have the draft decision available for you guys and right. the applicants. At that meeting? Yep. Which you're not going to send out to anybody? Not until the meeting. Or until what? The meeting, 12. Well, we're going to give it to them on 12-3. Who? The applicants. Draft decision. Draft. You're going you're gonna to give the applicant the draft? Yes, typically we let the lawyers look at it and make and add comments if they wish. And Would that be a little bit premature if the board hasn't come to terms with some of the things with the applicant? 
I don't Such think so. Town Council advised doing it once peer reviews were finished, and those are pretty much wrapped up. So the architectural peer reviews? No architectural no. peer reviews. We'll have a code review. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But are we expecting any additional materials between now and the next meeting, like a loading zone plan or anything like that? They should have a loading zone plan, ONF, OMS plan, um, and then the revised engineering plans to meet yeah, BRT comments. And yeah, we wanted to see their I think there's uh, coordination with our MLD. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a number of things we sh shouldn't yeah. discuss it now, but I, I think it's a little bit premature. Okay, I'll let Julie mm -hmm. know that. And I, am I? I'm speaking for just me. I mean, yeah. I mean, the board has to ink it out right. at the end. Uh, if you do a, a rough draft or, or whatever of the decision. Uh, that reminds me of some olden days when a former chair of this board used to write them before he got to the meeting, mm -hmm. he, before he had the hearing was opened. <laughs> uh, we haven't closed the December 3rd meeting, but we're handing out the decision already. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a little <laughs> premature. Okay. I didn't want to be there again. Okay. Anything else? That's Anything it. Anything else? One more motion for the evening. <laughs> Who wants to make it? Nate. Uh, how's that? Make a motion to adjourn. I'll just say so. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor. <laughs> okay, we're adjourned. All right. All right. All right.